when you're catching up with or following up with how your chronically ill friend is doing, there are more productive ways and empathetic ways to ask them how they're doing other than what is normally socially acceptable. Rather than asking about the health issues they're struggling with or what their exact symptoms are, you can ask them what they have had a hard time dealing with daily or ask if there's anything they need help with and what the limitations are that they are facing. You can ask what it is that you can do to help them feel encouraged or accomplished. I suggest this because if you do ask them what their health issues are or what their diagnosis is or even what their symptoms are, unless you are a specialist in the field or someone who suffers from similar illnesses, the answer to that question isn't going to help them. It probably just piques your curiosity or you just don't know what else to ask. Also, try not to offer a cure from an article or a testimonial that you've heard unless they specifically ask you for ideas on what they should do or try. You're more helpful to them when you just offer love and support and a listening ear. Your love for them may make you want to fix them, but in the process of you trying to do that, you're more likely to cause harm. When I answer the question as desired and tell someone I have rheumatoid arthritis, fibromyalgia, Barrett's esophagus, gastroparesis, and chronic fatigue, all they actually hear is arthritis and tired. They look at me and watch me move and don't recognize what they know to be the symptoms of arthritis. So they dismiss me and decide that either my symptoms aren't as bad as I make them out to be or that I'm a liar. When I talk with an elderly person and tell them some of my symptoms, they look at me and say, well, I'm elderly and I have arthritis in my joints and I also deal with pain on a daily basis. However, I'm still able to do the things that you're claiming you can't do or have trouble doing. But try to look at it this way. Think about when you swallow something and it goes down the wrong pipe, or if your throat gets irritated from something that you've eaten or drinking. You get a cough. Yes, this is a hard cough. It makes your eyes water, makes you lean over coughing, and can be painful at the moment that it's happening. Now, imagine the cough you get when you have the flu or pneumonia or some other virus. When you cough, in these circumstances, that cough drains the life out of you and makes you dizzy, makes you nauseous, and is a lot more painful. Along with that cough comes other symptoms of your virus that also take a toll on you. That is the difference between dealing with osteoarthritis or aging joints and rheumatoid arthritis. The joint pain itself is very different and the way it affects the rest of your body and your symptoms. That joint pain is accompanied by fever infections and viruses, exhaustion and fatigue, heat and swelling, and much of this is exacerbated by movement and exercise. I don't say this to downplay the pain and trials of osteoarthritis. I say this to point out the differences. So I ask you, please appreciate what it takes for your chronically ill friend or family member to do the normal everyday things that come easy to you. There is a high price to pay to do anything beyond what is completely necessary. And your compassion and appreciation for the sacrifice made to do these things can be very encouraging. Please be supportive, be 
helpful, be compassionate.